Good morning. My name is Gigi. Heartbreak for the St. Louis Metropolitan Police Department. Officers are in mourning over the loss of one of their own. Good evening, I'm Ann Allred. And I'm Mike Bush. We begin with terrible news. Tonight, the department announced Officer Tamaris Bohannon has died. His death comes one day after he and another officer were shot while responding to a call in South City. Bohannon was shot in the head. Five on your side's Robert Townsend is live at St. Louis University Hospital where a procession is about to get underway. Robert. Mike, and it is about to get out of the way. Let me tell you this, Officer Tamaris Bohannon dedicated three and a half years at the St. Louis Metropolitan Police Department, and all day and all night, a strong show of support for him at this hospital. Again, as you just mentioned, look at this long line. Dozens, dozens and dozens of St. Louis police officers have lined up here. You can see the lights flashing on their cars. They are about to participate in a procession as this fallen officer's body is being removed from St. Louis University Hospital. Again, so many people remembering this beloved, highly respected young officer killed in the line of duty. A somber Sunday for so many St. Louis police officers. They're dealing with the sudden and tragic loss of one of their own, Officer Tamaris Bohannon. Bohannon was shot in his head while responding to a call Saturday night. He was just 29 years old, a loving husband and father. Officer Bohannon's 30-year-old fellow officer, shot in his leg, was treated and released from the hospital. Sunday afternoon, many men and women in blue, St. Louis Mayor Lyda Cruson, Police Chief John Hayden, and Public Safety Director Jimmy Edwards all visited the critically injured Bohannon at St. Louis University Hospital. They hoped he would pull through. But sadly, hours later, the dedicated officer died. In a tweet, Bohannon's family says the beloved police officer was a great man, a hero to many, but most importantly to his loving wife and three incredible children. St. Louis Mayor Lida Cruson later issued a statement and said, quote, I am heartbroken over the line of duty death of Officer Tamaris Bohannon. The mayor also said the fallen officer's family is immensely proud of the way he selflessly served and protected our community with distinction and honor. And back here live outside the emergency room here at SLU Hospital, we're seeing more of Officer Bohannon's fellow officers lined up here. Again, I'm seeing sad faces, obviously, on a tough night like tonight. We also want to mention to this, that Officer Bohannon's three children were just under the age of 10. Two, three little kids now mourning, missing their dad. I also got to tell you this, Backstoppers, the Backstoppers organization, they are not right now helping this family for his final services. They're going to be raising a whole lot of money to cover those services. If you'd like to help out anyone here in the St. Louis community, all you have to do is go to our Five on Your Side app and click on this story. A very sad one this Sunday night. We're live in South City. I'm Robert Townsend. Five on Your Side. We'll be thinking about his wife and children. Robert, thank you. And we're learning more about the suspect in the police shootings and his criminal past. We're not naming him because he hasn't been charged, but sources tell our Christine Byers the man is 43 years old. He's wanted out of Florida on kidnapping and attempted sexual battery charges. While he lives in Florida, he's familiar with the St. Louis area. He has a criminal history here dating back to the 1990s, including two drug-related convictions. This all started when police were called to a house on Hartford Street for a possible shooting. Our Casey Nolan talked with the couple who made a call for help and feels lucky to be alive after a suspected shooter forced his way into their home and held them at gunpoint. He continues our team coverage. Couldn't figure out what was going on. And for I Mimi and Steve Haig, it started with a yell for help from their alley behind their house. Just before six Saturday evening, Mimi saw a man out back that they recognized from the neighborhood holding his arm. He told her he'd been shot and that the shooter was nearby. Good I shot. heard the shot yeah. and I heard him yelling, I've been shot. Mimi says she went back inside to call police. That's when the suspected shooter came in through their unlocked front door with a gun pointed at her husband. They say something told both of them to just turn around and leave out the back. We do, we just think our guardian angels just 
put their hands on our shoulders, turned us, and walked us out. He could have very easily just shot the both of us. They got out, but the man with the gun stayed inside. When officers arrived just moments later, the Hagues say the suspect started shooting at the officers from inside their home, hitting one in the head and another who tried to help him in the leg. I heard a shot, I turned around, and the officer was just laying on the sidewalk, and I thought, he's not moving. It was horrible, just, just horrible. For nearly 12 hours, police negotiated and eventually tear gassed the man out of the house after firing canisters through just about every window in the Hague's home. Around 5 a.m., police arrested the 43-year-old suspect. These are people who face that every day, <laughs> and I'll get on my soapbox, and there are people who say, we need to defund the police, that's, that's baloney. The officers did an awesome job last night, um, and we're very thankful. The Hagues believe their survival was divine intervention and say they'll continue to pray for the same for the officers and everyone involved. We're very, very concerned and love our neighbors and our neighborhood, and we feel very bad for this poor man who was so sick or something that he had to, you know, feel he had to shoot people. Casey Nolan, five on your side. Police tell us they have not located the possible first victim, and they're not sure if he was shot or just shot at. They encourage anyone with any information to contact the Force Investigative Unit. That number is 314-231-1212. We'll also have that number posted on KSDK.com.